Hello YouTube, this is Marcus again with another video. This evening's video I'm going to be giving a little bit of an overview of a little software project that I started and have been maintaining for a couple of years, primarily for my own use, uh, but it's been getting some downloads here lately, so uh, I thought I'd make a video explaining how to use it here. It's called YouTube-DL-GTK. I know the name's horrible. I've thought about changing it. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. It's basically a, a Python front end to YouTube-DL, which is usually it's a command line only program, so I put a little bit of a, a very basic uh, user interface on top of it to make it a little bit easier to use. It's all free. YouTube-DL is in the, uh, uh, what's it called, the uh, uh, free domain or public domain so it's it's perfectly free uh, and I released this source code under the GNU GPL uh, version 3 but uh, anyway this is the SourceForge page here when you go here you should see this green button that's linked to the version appropriate for your operating system so if you're running Windows you're gonna see you know file name .exe if you're running anything else you're gonna see this file name .tar .gz if you see the wrong file name here for example if you're running Windows and you see this .tar.gz linked here. You can just go ahead and open the files page, go into the folder for the latest version or the version you want, and manually download this exe. Now, the tarball version will run on Windows just fine, except you have to have Python installed. And I wrote it in Python 3, so I'm not going to guarantee that it will work if you're using uh, a Python 2. Uh, so, if you're running Windows, you download your exe, you run it, and you install it and it makes an icon and we'll catch up to that point here in a little bit. If you're running Linux or if you're running Windows and you just want to use uh, this version of it, you're going to download the tarball here and uh, we'll put that on the desktop here. Now just to uh, clarify here, I do not have it currently installed on my system. Uh, I'm kind of clarifying this because some guy had a plug-in or an, an extension on his browser the other day on Google Plus and he went to download the last version that I released and said that his browser told him that it could be malware because it was not commonly downloaded. Yeah, it's not commonly downloaded because I'm just some guy who wrote it for myself and decided, hey, let's put it on SourceForge. So it's not commonly downloaded, but it is open source. If you don't trust me, open it in a text editor and look at the source code. But anyway, here's the uh, the archive here. Let's go ahead and extract that. Now, I, one thing I've noticed, if you're running Windows and you download this tarball and you extract it with 7-zip, it doesn't extract it straight to a folder a lot of time. It'll extract, like, do a, a .tar file, and then you have to extract that .tar file to get this folder. But anyway, once you've got this folder, you've got two options here. You can either run this file directly by just double-clicking it and hitting Run in Terminal, if your system doesn't ask you, if it, if it just opens it in a text editor, you may have to set it so that it's allowed to execute as a program. Alright, so you can either just double click this yt-dl-gtk.py file. And like I said, if you don't trust me, you can hit display here. There's the source code for it right there. You can read it. It's all plain text. We're just going to run it in terminal here and you get your little welcome message you can hit continue we're gonna post uh... where's it at here that one right there we're gonna download this video and uh... in this version i have added the option to authenticate with your google username and password so if there's a video that is say age restricted or something where you have to log in to see it you can now authenticate here in order to download those videos it still will not download anything that is tagged as being uh, say proprietary or commercial so if you you can't download the rented movies on YouTube but most things you can download uh, if you don't want to log in you can just leave this blank and it'll go ahead and download the video to your desktop folder and while it's running the download you can see the status back here this output is all from YouTube-DL so it's got all, whatever it says is what's going to get printed back here and you get your little success video has been successfully downloaded to your desktop and so let's go ahead and delete it here now when you if you've installed this software in Windows and you double click the icon on your desktop 
that's what you're going to see starting from right here. It's basically going to be the same. So let's download it again and I'll demonstrate using your username and password. We're going to go ahead and log in here to my account. You hit OK. It's going to ask you for your password. All right, we'll hit OK. And then you get the same kind of deal, except you'll see a couple extra lines here where it says logging in. And it downloaded the video there. If there's an error, uh, for example, if you just enter some URL that doesn't work, you know, you'll get a little error message that pops up and tells you that. All right. Now, that's just running it outright. If you're running Linux, where you don't have the little automated installer, you can actually run an installer. I've written one here for Linux systems. All you have to do is inside the folder here, just either right click and hit open terminal or open a terminal and change directory into this folder wherever you've put it become root or if you're running Ubuntu instead of SU you can say sudo dot slash install dot sh if you're running a system that does not have sudo like I've set mine up with just a regular root account you just become root and then you dot slash dot forward slash install dot sh and you hit enter and it's basically going to tell you this is the installer if you already have an older version it's going to override it and uh, close any programs to avoid losing your work press enter enter your username my username is Marcus and that's it and you can see here that it created a little de desktop icon so now that we've got that we can delete these files because it copies the uninstaller to the installation directory. So you've got an icon here that you can double click or you can go into your menu and it puts a menu icon in there as well that also runs it. So since we've got the menu icon I'm not going to clutter my desktop I'll just go ahead and delete this but we've still got the icon that's in the menu here. All right if you wish to uninstall this software for whatever reason all of its uh, it, it is installed to the forward slash opt ytdlgtk folder and you'll see inside here there's a little uninstall.sh script oh also while we're in here you will also see that the full source code for youtube-dl the archive for the version that this that this version uses is included right here so if you want to see the full source code of YouTube-DL since it is what does the downloading it's right in this archive. Uh, so in order to uninstall it I'm just going to open a terminal we're going to change directory into the installed folder and as root if you're running Ubuntu you would just say sudo dot slash uninstall dot sh uh, or since I don't have sudo set up I'm going to become root and I'm going to say dot slash uninstall dot sh my username the reason it asks for that on the uninstall process is it checks for and deletes a uh, desktop icon if there is one and you can now see here that the folder has been removed now another thing it also does here let me uh, restore the archive here well, we'll just re-download it. I've got a another version before I uploaded it where I changed it a little bit. Direct link. And extract that. We will reinstall it. And another thing that it does is it also creates a symbolic link. So if you want to write your own scripts on top of it, it creates a symbolic link here. So you just run the command yt-dl-gtk from any terminal, and that will execute the program for you. So it creates a symbolic link and installs them to their own folder, etc. Uh, if you're running Windows, uh, uh, you just install the exe file and it operates the exact same way you've got the exact same user interface uh, I might bring up a virtual machine here in a second and uh, show you real quick just uh, 
just for kicks. All right, so if you're running Windows, you just go to the SourceForge page, and you'll see here that the little green button is automatically linked to the .exe file. So we're just going to click on that. Now, in Google Chrome, and a couple of uh, test runs on this, I found that on Windows, at least, if you download an .exe file that does not meet some mysterious criteria, uh, so far Google Chrome and Internet Explorer, and I'd probably bet Mozilla, Mozilla Firefox too, flags it. Internet Explorer keeps it, but it puts a little red message. Google Chrome actually confiscates the file once it's done and tells you it's not commonly downloaded and could be dangerous. You have to click this little arrow and click keep in order to keep the downloaded file. So now that we've downloaded it, we'll just run it. Close Chrome here. We're going to say yes. Next, this is all the licensing information for everything from my source code to the uh, projects that it's built on. The README for the whole thing. And this is your standard setup, you know, installation stuff here. Now there's quite a bit more being installed here uh, because whenever you compile it, you know, it includes some, some things necessary for it to be compiled to a binary.exe file. So that's why the Windows executable is a little bit larger than the, uh, the tarball uh, version of the project because the tarball version is literally just the source code. And this version is the source code plus the compiled version. So once it's installed here, you'll see you've got a desktop icon here and if you go to your start menu you've got a little start menu folder here complete with a link to uninstall it so let's grab us the YouTube link here we'll double click the icon we'll say continue I'm not going to worry about authenticating so I'll just leave it blank continue and the same rules apply here it'll show you the output back here and we downloaded the video and uh, talking about the output being visible there, if there's an error, your error details will also be printed back here in the terminal window. So see, you've got this little window basically telling you there is an error, but you see the details, you can come back here and it tells you is not a valid URL. So we just hit OK. Now, along with the uh, icons on the .exe version, the installer also includes, the Windows installer includes a copy of the source code. So if you go into your program files and the installation folder, you'll see that you have the Python files and things in here as well. So you can read the source code for, uh, you, you can read the source code that you're actually running on your system. This is the binary executable version that's, that gets run but this is literally just a compiled binary version of this source code. So all of this source code is included here. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that is my little project, YouTube DL uh, GTK. It's, uh, like I said, it's just a little project that I started a couple years ago for myself. And uh, I've shared it with my mom and my wife and a few other people. And I figured, what the heck, let's put it on SourceForge. And it's been getting a little bit of popularity, so uh, I've been trying to just kind of at least maintain it, keep it up to date. And uh, now hopefully you guys will find it useful. Uh, if you have any problems with it or comments or suggestions about my YouTube videos or my YouTube channel, uh, feel free to post them in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any anything that's specific to one of my SourceForge projects here, there should be a discussion area uh, that's open to the public on all of my SourceForge projects so just uh, drop a, a topic in the general discussion or something or you can send me an email at my email address which is listed on all of my SourceForge pages as well as or it should be I'll make sure to fix that uh, and it's also listed in the readme and stuff for my software so uh, yeah this is uh, Marcus y'all have a good one. Take